Welcome to the Elite Life with Trisha and Kylie. This is where we'll teach you how to develop grit, give yourself grace, and succeed in real estate. So let's dive in. All right. Welcome back, guys. So Kylie and I are reminiscing about how the heck we ended up in this crazy life of real estate. Kylie, you want to start with your story? I love I love hearing all the bits and pieces that brought you here. Yeah. So um, like I've briefly talked about before, I went to school to be a paralegal. Um, I thought I wanted to go to law school, even to the point where I took the LSATs, passed the LSATs. Um, and finished my college career. I got a bachelor's degree in paralegal science. And um, so I'm doing this law stuff and I spent 10 years in doing family law and I came to a place where like it was really depressing, like helping people get divorced. And, you know, I love to help people and that's a really tough time. And I I was really honored to, um, you know, help our clients through this tough time and make sure that they didn't have to worry about any of the legal stuff. But at the same time, like it wasn't filling my cup. Like I was feeling Feeling really, really sad. Um, so I came to a place where I was like, OK. And then I ended up in property management. So I was approached by property management. Um, he owned a company and he was like, hey, I want you to do sales. And that um, eventually led to me being the COO for a long time, which was so fun. It, honestly, I loved every person on the team. I loved everything that we did. And the learning experiences that I got from that from that position um, really just helped me actually kind of like decide what I wanted to do when I grew up. Right. So um, so then I ended up saying, OK, um, I'm going to get my real estate license. And I was working it kind of part time ish. Honestly, um, I was doing the property management. I was kind of doing a few deals on the side. But again, I came to that place where I, I was really not being filled. I was not I wasn't unhappy, but I knew in my heart of hearts that that was not something that I wanted to do for a career. It was a job. It made sure that the bills were paid. We had food on the table, which is important, right? Like yeah. not uh, not discounting that at all. So um, I came to a place where I talked to you and yes. I was like, "This, these are the dreams I have. These are the goals that I have. And I know in my heart of hearts that I'm not going to be able to accomplish these things if I stay where I'm at right now. And then you just kind of took your, uh, your fancy little boot there and you shoved it in my rear end and you're like, <laughs> read this book. Um, you gave me Marie Forleo's uh, Everything is Figure Outable, so which was good. such a great recommendation. I, did, I read through it. I did all of the activity steps and it's in my heart. I said, OK, we are going to go into real estate full time. And so I've been able to do real estate full time. It's been a great success. We've got some um, I've got some amazing agents that I've partnered up with that I've had the blessing of of mentoring and um, really what I want people to understand from my story is that you what I love about real estate is you don't have to have a formal education. You don't have to know anything about real estate. Honestly, you don't even have to like sales, but you have to have some kind of driving force um, because this career has allowed me to uh, do things I've never been able to do before. So we've got a seven-year-old at home, a five-year-old at home, and a five-month-old. I've been able to be real estate. My career in real estate has allowed me to be home with him. Um, I remember with the girls, I was gone a lot. I was working 40, 50 hours a week. They were going to daycare. And I was so blessed to have a place where I could drop them off, have a support system of family and friends who would help me pick them up. But like, I was missing so much of their tiny little lives that go so fast. Like, I didn't know their cues and, and what they did all day and who held them and who touched them. And being having this career in real estate has allowed me to um, that's a success for me. So like success looks different for everybody. And we've talked about that so many times. So success for me and my husband is not, I mean, obviously everybody wants to make money. So I'm not going to say it's not a six figure <laughs> job, but, but for us, we wanted to make sure that we were home with our kids, mm -hmm. that when there was a half day, they didn't have to go to childcare. We could pick them up from school. We could go on field trips without having to ask somebody permission to leave work and worry about making up that time later. Mm -hmm. So, um, that's kind of my story in a nutshell. Um, it's not, uh, this, you know, great tragic tale, <laughs> but it is a story that I feel like a lot of people um, can relate to. Um, I know there's a lot of people out there like me, parents, not parents, who are just kind of floating around in the jobs that they're in and kind of wondering how they're going to, uh, like for Ryan and I, get to the farm. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I remember our, one of our first coaching calls, you were like, so what's your dream? What's your end goal? I'm like, I need a farm on a hill in the woods. <laughs> and you were like, 
kind of conflicting there. <laughs> Usually farms are not on a hill or in a wood, but so that is our, that's our end game. That's our goal is, you know, like 100, 200 acres on a farm, animals, all of that stuff. Um, and this is helping make it a reality. <clears throat> And it's been so mind blowing so far. I'm so excited for this next year and just to see all the people we're going to meet and all the people we're going to help because this truly is one of the very, very few professions where you can come in without a formal education um, and you can literally make as much money or as little money as you want. Yeah. And I just want to, you said some, some great things and it really, it took me back to our, our first coaching calls. And number one, I am so incredibly proud of you and all (laughs) that you have done because I can remember multiple coaching calls where you're like, I don't want to be a realtor. (laughs) Like I see other realtors, they're miserable. They're getting ran all over the place. They're spending all this time and money. They're not getting any footing. And you came in and you did the training and you found Followed the path and you hit it out of the park. Like I, I just came back from having two weeks off, and I know I, I processed multiple files of yours. I'm like, look at Kylie, like just been awesome. it. So I mean, that needs to be said too. Like even if you've seen other people, um, not have success, a multiple people a whole office of not successful agents, that doesn't mean that this is not an industry where you can be successful. And I think you did it the right way. You started with the end in mind. What does success look like for us? What is our end goal? And how do we reverse engineer that and make it work for us? And I know like another thing you said that rang so true to me and I picture there was a time when I was working for another um, broker and I was getting that paycheck but when you're working for somebody else you know as a hourly employee like you said like there's specific times that are expected from you and I used to work dark to dark six seven days a week and I can remember coming home and Trent was little and he's like mama I just miss you so much oh. And I was like, oh my God. It's like a dagger right in your heart and your blood goes everywhere. Yeah, because I mean, it it just, it crushed me. And I was like, I got to do my own thing. Like having, you know, having this paycheck you quote unquote can depend on. At the end of the day, like that kind of segues into like how I got into real estate because you know, you can't, you can't count on that paycheck because that person I worked for, his office got shut down. So, so much for being a dependable paycheck, right? Right. Like, and that happened multiple times, you know, um, I got into real estate totally by accident. Like you, I had worked so, so hard through high school and, you know, retook my, um, ACTs and SATs multiple times, did guest college classes at Schoolcraft so I could get accepted to U of M to be a doctor yeah. and I had to have scholarships so I had to have those test grades high enough and my whole life was like on this trajectory go to U of M got accepted which nobody told me I would they're like you're a white woman and you live in Michigan you're not getting accepted to U of M it's not happening like just forget about it and Dang. everybody told me forget about it like you're not going to get in it's harder to get in when you live in state it's harder to get in when you don't have boxes to check that they're looking for or you don't have anybody in your family who went to college that's going to pull strings for you. Like, it's not happening. And People I, told you this? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. All the time. They're like, there's, there's like zero chance. And I'm like, no, like, I'm doing the work. I'm getting the grades. I'm, I was in every extracurricular. I did palms, band, newspaper, <laughs> like, track and field, like, literally everything you could possibly be in. Yearbook, choir, like, I did did everything it took to get in here. And the kind of crazy thing in hindsight is it wasn't my dream to be a doctor. Mm. My parents had always talked about like how amazing, you know, people's kids were that were doctors. And so in my mind, it was like, if I could do this, if I could go, if I could be the first person in my family to go to college and I could have this prestigious job, my parents would love me more and be proud of me. Mm. And that's like a really sad thing in hindsight, because I work so hard for somebody else's dream. Yep. And I happened um, to, I, I waitressed at 
three places during college. I um, waitressed at a place here in Livonia. And like I said, I was out at U of M. So I waitressed at uh, the Blue Nile restaurant out there. And then I also worked at a hospital for an internship at St. Joe's Hospital out there. And so I was working, 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 school, 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 full load of classes, three jobs. And it was summertime. And a friend of mine was like, hey, I work at this um, mortgage and real estate office. They are looking for people to work the phones, like a telemarketing job. I didn't know what telemarketing was, but it was a telemarketing job. And they're like, you know, she's like, come in. You won't have to wait tables. And I'm like, that sounds phenomenal. Like, (laughs) you know, I'm in college. So like she would dress up fancy every day to go to work. And like, seriously, I thought that was cool. I was like, oh, I want to wear dress clothes and like high heels and like fancy and go to work and not clean up peanuts off the floor (laughs) and not have to be with deal with people that are super rude. So I was like, I was like, this would be awesome. So my first day at work, like I'm going to date myself. We used to run ads in the newspaper. Ooh. Yeah, newspaper, newspaper (laughs) Um, (laughs) for rental properties. And then people would call in and I would answer that call and um, get their information. And then back then, everybody qualified for a mortgage. So I would call them back and be like, I know you you called to rent, but I just want to let you know you actually can be approved to own a home. And they would be like, oh, my gosh, like, you're my angel. That's so amazing. Like, I didn't think I could ever do that. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I got your back. So it was like super exciting because people... People were so, so just, just like they would call me their angel and and hug me, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is like you just changed their life. Yeah, you were just changed lives. lives. Yes, and I I loved everything about it. And at that time, you could be the loan officer and the realtor, and because I was so organized and just used to grinding, I also was the loan processor. Oh my (laughs) god! So I did the loan officer job, the realtor job, and I processed all the deals for the office. Um, But I didn't know, like I was so young, you don't know what you don't know. And I was only 20 years old. And I didn't know that you got actual real estate commissions for when you closed a real estate job. And I worked for a guy and he gave us 500 bucks per deal. For being the loan officer, the realtor, and processing the deal. Well, I was 20, so $500 was a lot of money to me, right? And so I thought that was great until I found out it wasn't. Right. (laughs) Right? You're missing out on literally thousands of dollars. Tens of thousands of dollars. Because back then, I would be closing, like, no joke, like, eight to ten deals per month as a brand new agent. Shut up. everybody qualified for a mortgage. So it was just super, super easy to do real estate then. Because literally everybody could be approved. So we were just pulling in all these clients, all these clients, all day, every day. Because anybody could get a house. And then it was just like, and we were young, so we didn't have any fears like I wasn't scared of failure because I didn't know what failure looked like I was just excited to get dressed up and go show houses every day (laughs) like and I was making $500 per client which was more money than I ever dreamed of like I went from like taking back bottles and like getting ramen noodles out of my parents cupboards to like oh my gosh I just got 500 whole dollars right you know so it was a big deal um but once I found out that my boss was taking all the money I could have been making and buying Jaguars and Range Rovers and uh. just turning into a super toxic boss. Like, I probably could have been fine about it and wouldn't have done any homework, like, if he was a nice guy. But he was super toxic. And so I left working for him and I got a job just, again, going back to that, like, I need a paycheck as just a loan processor. Well, lo and behold, I ended up with another toxic boss. And that manager, she was like a dual citizen in Canada and she embezzled like millions of dollars (gasps) from the company. Yeah. That is the craziest thing. Right? So I was like, okay, I need to like stop working for these like small mom and pop shops and I'll go into like the corporate world because now I have experience. I know how to do all this stuff in mortgages. I had a friend who worked for um, Decision One Mortgage, which is the wholesale side of lending. So retail is like, you know, your mortgage brokers and wholesale is who they sell those loans to, right? So when you close on your house, you might have closed on it with Cross Country Mortgage, but then they go and sell that loan to Wells Fargo, right? Okay, okay. So Decision One was like the, the Wells Fargo, who they sold it to. So I was on the other side of the fence. I was with the underwriters and the 
people who actually say you're clear to close. So were you still doing like the med school thing at this point or had you? Oh, no. Like I had when I got that job, that summer job at the mortgage company, I worked for three weeks, I think. And I was like, I'm not going back to school. I'm like, I'm making all this money. Like, I love what I'm doing. And I was like, I'm not going to go back in the fall. I told my parents, I was like, I'll go back someday. And they cried. Like, my stepdad actually said, like, I will pay you to go back to school. You are breaking your mother's heart. And I felt bad. But I also felt like all my life I've done what everybody told me I should do. And I wasn't happy. Like, I, I, I just... Being at U of M was like, I I came from a small private school, so I was this little fish in this huge pond, and I didn't have a lot of confidence at the time, so I just got lost, and I had no confidence, no joy, nothing that, like, like was filling me or making me happy. And I just felt like I, I just lost myself. Like I didn't know who I was or what I wanted to do. And when I, when I got into that real estate and that mortgage office and I started like telling people you can buy a house and like experiencing this amazing feeling and all of this happiness yeah. of, Hey, this is where you're going to, you know, raise your family or have your pups or have your holidays or bring your friends for Friendsgiving. Like it was so exciting exciting. And I didn't want to lose that. And for that was the first time in my life where I ever kind of, you know, went against the man and was like, I'm going to do what I want to do. And I felt like it was, it was, a it didn't feel like a risk because I was making more money than I had ever made before. Yeah. So it felt safe financially and it brought me so much excitement and happiness. I was like, I have to do this. Like, I love this. And I did feel like in the back of my mind, like I would go back to college someday and I, I, I would finish that road, but I just loved what I was doing so much. And then I just kept loving it more and more and more, (laughs) um, minus the toxic bosses. But just being a part of that part of people's lives of buying a home, something about that just, it just sets me on fire. And still to this day, like, you know, I'm a broker, I'm a coach, I'm a trainer. I still love to go and show people houses. And I still do it every week, you know. And people are like, oh, most brokers don't show houses to buyers, especially first-time home buyers. And I'm like, I love that, though. (laughs) Like, I love being able to tell somebody, like, your offer got accepted. This is your new home. And, like, seeing them, their faces light up. Some of them cry. Oh, my gosh. It's so – they do. They cry, and they're just so excited, and they're they're planning their futures. You're a part of planning these people's futures and changing their lives and and doing things that maybe they thought they could never do, you know, if they went through a bankruptcy or a foreclosure or a short sale or a bad divorce or – they had so much time that they worked on saving money or building their credit. Like you're just doing this amazing thing with them and for them. And if you work your real estate business right, you make friends for the rest of your life with your clients. If you follow up with them and, you know, you friend them on social media and you send them follow-up cards and handwritten letters and stay in touch with them. You really build this network and this group of people that you can be in contact with forever that is not only an ever-flowing sense of business for you, but support. You know, a lot of my clients have been uh, hockey coaches or doctors or teachers or just different people throughout the community that later on they'll see me post like, does anybody know of this and it's like oh yeah here you go so now you have this network of people right you have a tribe yeah. that know like and trust you and that you know like and trust and that continue to send you business and yeah I've segued off into a whole other circle but <laughs> yes I left college <laughs> and stayed in this amazing world that I love and could talk about for 700 years so um yeah and that was that was really hard on, on oh, my I'm parents sure. and my family and it was hard for me to take that stand because I had never taken a stand like that before. It was always like, go along with what you're told. I was the good kid. I was the hard (laughs) worker. I was staying in the box because that's where I should. Yeah. Um, My sister was busy being the middle child and causing all the chaos. So there was no room for me to do that. You know? Um, But I felt like the good I could do in the world now, here and now, like 
doctors are amazing and they do amazing things and so much good in the world, but I felt like I could do this good right now today. And I was changing lives right now today. And I didn't want to give that up. I didn't want to give up being able to take massive action right now with something that was bringing me so much joy and, and so much excitement and was something I chose, you know, and, and I loved it and I loved it and I still love it. And so I went through getting that processor job and, and leaving there and going into corporate, um, America on the wholesale side of things. And it was crazy because I got, I got into that corporate job and I was so used to grinding that I would do my desk and two other people's desks. Like one girl was sick in my first week. And so I was doing her desk too. And my desk. Oh my gosh. And then another person like left throughout the day. So I was doing their desk. And so I was just like grinding and grinding and I was fast because I just love I love being busy and and producing and and being successful so that was a cool space where I could do I I could keep working all day long you know and be busy all day long and I worked through I remember when I got my first paycheck I was like my paycheck's short and they're like no you're supposed to take a lunch and I'm like but I didn't and they're like but you're supposed to (laughs) (laughs) and I was like I just like to work I'm like that meme like I just really like it I like to work I like to do it you know and your hair is standing on Oh, yeah. But it worked out because I was there for seven months and I got promoted to running the branch. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm set for life. Like, here I am, you know, early 20s, single mom, got this corporate job. And I'm like, I'm set for life. I never have to worry about another thing. I got a 401k. I got a flexible spending account. They're paying for my daycare. They're flying me all over the U.S. to help other branches improve their production and their conversion and their closing ratios and raise their bottom line. And then the subprime implosion happened and there was no more subprime and the whole branch shut down. So I literally in like weeks of time went from like having my dream job to having no job. And I'm like, something has got to give with this. And I was like, all right, I have this real estate license let me go back and like really dig into this because this was the point in time where real estate and mortgages really took a separation, okay. which was needed. It was needed in the industry for real estate to separate from, from mortgages because they're both really important pieces to the puzzle of buying a home. And there should be two separate people handling it because that's a lot to put in one person's you know, plate. Not yeah. everybody is a grinder or multi-talented and some people are sales brained and some people are data and organized brain. And most of the time, the two do not combine. The two combined for me because it had to, right? Like at this point in time, I'm a single mom. I have to be able to sell. I have to be able to do a desk job. I have to do what I have to do to get by. Yeah. And and I have to be great at it or else my kid doesn't have diapers or food. And right. that's not an option, right? right? Totally. So I was like, I have this real estate license. Let me see what I can do with this. And I had a friend that like owned a real estate office. So I was like, hey, like who's managing your agents? Because again, in my mind, I was still like, I need this, this paycheck. And he's like, I don't have an agent manager. Like agents just do what they want to do. And I'm like, well, let me come in. Like I'll, I'll get your people organized. I'll get your office organized. He's like, yeah, whatever. That's fine. So he gave me a little paycheck, right? Not even close to enough as I should have been making. So it was a win for him because he has someone that's going to come in and work hard for nothing. Right. And I'm young. So nothing is still a lot to me. So it was still a win-win both ways, but he was also another toxic boss, (laughs) misspent money. And I worked for him for, I think maybe a year and his office got shut down and I'm like dude and he had told me when I was working for him he said Trisha I don't understand why you keep working for other people like you should be a real estate broker and have your own office like this is silly <laughs> he's is like that when you were like okay well let's do that no I was still scared oh, no. <laughs> I was still super scared I'm like no I need to get I need to know I'm getting a paycheck and he's like you would make so much more money you would have so much more of a life he's like I know you work for me and I I am cleaning up off of that but like you really should do this for yourself and I was just totally against it because in my mind I was so hardwired for or a paycheck is dependable. If somebody says they're going to pay you this paycheck, you're going to get this paycheck and you don't have to worry. Whereas if I just go out and I'm a realtor, 
what if I don't close deals, right? Like I still didn't have the confidence inside of me yeah. to just bet on myself with no safety net. But when his office got shut down, I was like, dude, this is not a safety net. I've now lost my job. How many times now? One, two, three, four, five times. That's like God telling you, like, right. do <laughs> you. Right. So I'm sitting there, I'm on unemployment and I'm like, you know what? I might as well sign up for these. Like that was just when like online classes was starting to become a thing. And I was like, let me sign up to get my broker's license and to get your broker's license here in Michigan, it is uh, three different classes you take. It's a broker's class, a builder's class, an appraiser's class. So I went and did the in-person brokerage class. And at night, I did the appraisal and the builder's class. And I finished all my brokerage um, classes and passed the test in two weeks. Holy Moses. Yeah. And um, I'm like, OK, now I'm a broker. Now what? And I actually. <laughs> now what do I do? Right now what do I do? Right. And um, so again, like that still like fear of starting my own thing I went and found a partner oh so here progresses like I, she ends up being awful I end up having to like re- have cops remove her from my oh office my gosh. Yes. and I'm like okay no no more of this I will bet on myself okay no God's more other me people the message. yep and so that was when I like sat down um with our managing partner Andy and I'm like you know sit with me here let's sit in this and think about like what what would we have wanted when we were new agents in the real estate industry, right? Um, because a solo a solo entrepreneur can only go so far, right? Like if it's just me, I can only have so many ideas and do so much. So having Andy and some core people that I had met in real estate and sitting down and like having this like brain dump session, as yeah. you like to call it. Brain dump. Um, and bounce ideas off of each other and just decide. Decide to build something different. Decide to build a culture that is against the grain in real estate, right? Like, because in real estate, as we've said so many times, here's your desk, here's your phone, good luck. And I knew that there could be so much more in real estate. And that's what we went out to build. That's what the elite life and elite realty and and being elite is all about. It's about finding that joy and building your dream and getting outside of that box of it should just be this or just chasing that next paycheck and saying, if I go out to serve and strengthen others, if I go out to, you know, build the, the, the mission statement at Elite Realty is to build and grow and strengthen elite realtors who serve and strengthen the community. It doesn't say anything about have Trisha put her face on a billboard, right? <laughs> like that is not what it's about. It's about building and strengthening the others and building and strengthening yourself. And that is the culture that we've built in our office. That is the culture that I've built with my coaching and training. That's the culture we're building here on this podcast and this YouTube channel is how can I build myself and strengthen myself and how can I build and strengthen and serve others? And so, yeah, so that's how I got into it and that's how it morphed into this. And it's been a crazy ride and I'm sure I'm missing like lots of little, you know, little turns in the the road, but those are all good stories for future podcasts, right? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> no, I, episodes. I love hearing your story. Like, no joke. Every time I hear your story, it amazes me. Like how many med students just do like a 180 and go in a completely different direction? They're like, well, and I'm done with med school. Right, like, right. Yeah. That's completely unheard of because like you said, so many people are are chasing someone else's dream. And it takes such courage to step out of your comfort zone and, um, you know, have, you know, take the chance of having people because your parents very well could have said, if you drop out of school, I'm done with you. Yeah. Oh, for sure. You know, for I sure. know that happens all the time. I've talked to so many people who that has happened for. And so for you to be able to take that step um, and be able to support other people who are going through that. So like, you know, um, someone who comes to you and is like, so I'm over here. I want to be over here, but I have these people or this impediment or this wall. Um and being able to help people over that or through that or under that or around that, um, you know, and and having the tools. I mean, like the My Stars Academy um, is such an amazing tool for you to have and for your agents. And I know all your agents are doing so well. Um, and I know the one thing, like you said, that you that you tout about about elite the elite life is your family style culture. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, one thing like you talk about that you wish you had at the beginning, like rather than being in like a puppy mill, 
you know, you're in a family of people who care about you. You're not just a number. You're not just a paycheck. You're not a commission check to somebody else. You're not a transaction fee. You're a person with your own family and dreams and, you know, wants and aspirations and all the things. So I really love your story. That's why I had to have you tell it. It's it's amazing. And like you said, there's so many other little details that I've heard that I know you're going to share in, in the future. So I'm really excited for you to, um, you know, just pour that out on people. Yeah. And I'm excited to have other people on too, because real estate is really for everybody. I mean, we have, you know, my story and your story are so drastically different. And we're going to have more people on like Rachel, who came in this year, and she has just hit it out of the park, six kids, six kids over, I think she's over 30 transactions already this year. She's, she's killing, killing it, killing it in units. She's able to and she was a, she was a waitress before, you know, I remember so. before she quit. I remember before she quit. And I remember mm-hmm. talking to her, there was one day in the closing, uh, uh, the closers corner where we were just we were just catching up and you know I asked her you know how things were going at the restaurant and stuff like that and she's like I'm just done like she was so bogged down and downtrodden and then like I saw the posts like on social media that she'd finally made the leap to full-time real estate and like me she felt that open box top like and she just came out I mean and the fact like we said that she she's got six kids she does um I think she does like Uh, like dog rescues and things Mm -hmm. too like she has so many buckets to fill and she's still successful she's still successful yeah absolutely and we have tons of people that we'll bring on that will tell those same stories because it doesn't matter if you're you know we have teachers firefighters flight attendants moms dads you know just any walk of life any culture any space if you come into real estate and you just want to help people and you just love the idea of being able to do this you can do it and that's why like we've talked about before using the 411 and the goal planner and deciding what success looks like for you it helps you to make that bridge like you said the bridge from here is where I am and here is where I want to get to and I can't tell you like it makes my heart so happy I've helped so many people build that bridge and cross it whether it was just like I mean like I said in my story there it took me a long time to cross that bridge longer than my, than you or any of my other agents, you know? (laughs) And I, but I kept taking this, this next brave step and this next brave step. So I understand those people who are super, super scared and they have a lot to lose, right? Being a single mom myself, I had everything to lose. All, all I could bet on was myself. Yeah. And I just kept taking the next brave step so we can help you and that's what this is all about is teaching you how to take just that one next brave step or shoot let's burn the boats and jump in, right? <laughs> right? Child by fire. so whichever way you want to do it there's a way to get there whatever is comfortable for you and I think that's a good way to button this episode up yeah absolutely so uh yeah that's our show for today um I hope everybody enjoyed the ride like this has been super fun so far um amazing things we are off uh next week for uh the new year we're gonna be back in January with some fire Fire. (laughs) spit hot fire (laughs) I'm so excited I'm so looking forward to meeting all the amazing people we're gonna have on the show um have call in we're gonna have call-in days um and all of just like the good good goodness to spread around the grit the grace and the real estate so we'll see you guys next year uh don't forget to head over to mystarsacademy.com we've got tons of freebies to share with you like i said before the worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to go over there you're going to look at it you're going to print it out and you're not going to use it but if you implement these tools that we have if you invest in yourself and get into the agent accelerator program um, we've got a money back guarantee so you literally have nothing to lose yeah we just want to help everybody be successful and everybody deserves success no matter what it looks like heck yeah i think that's a big thing to remember you deserve success you deserve joy you deserve the elite life right absolutely build an empire and leave a legacy all right we'll see you guys next time let's go we thank you so much for joining us today on the elite live with trish and kylie be sure to share the episode with a friend so we can continue bringing you more great tips on grit grace and real estate you can also connect with us on instagram facebook we hope the ideas we share continue to help you build an empire and leave a legacy